significantly with her over the last couple of days. She um, got a little bit amped up in the small pen and she put herself underneath a cow and got stepped on. She wasn't hurt, but I think it scared her. Um, and so she's been really she's been really apprehensive of the cattle this week. I did take her back to sheep once or twice um, just to try to get her going. Um, and that doesn't translate very well. It does help to kind of boost their confidence a little bit, get them back to work and uh, let them understand that it's okay to go to work. But it doesn't change the fact that sheep and goats are not cattle and she's just going to have to deal with that on cattle. Um, so a lot of the rest of the week has been spent um, basically letting her push, letting her um, engage with the cattle, trying to keep her safe and out from underneath them. You can see from what, even from what we're doing, there's a lot of sniffing, there's a lot of poop eating, there's a lot of disinterest. Um, I did initially start this session trying to put a little bit of um, control not big control, but we were walking up and I asked her to down and then I asked her to walk up again and that really kind of took the fire out of her. Um, so, back, taking a few steps back again, just going to let her push on these cattle, walk them around, wherever they want to go is fine. I'm not going to ask her to control where they're going because at this point if I did, she would quit. Um, she does tend to gravitate towards the heel, so she works a lot like her brother. Um, and if one of them faces her, um, that's when she got herself kind of in trouble, is they faced her and she backed out and the cow kind of ran her over. Um, so she's not really um, super keen on the heads, much more of a heel dog, so something you're gonna be using to push in the alleyways or push up or like kind of drive towards the gate or towards the end of a pasture. Not a dog that I think is going to independently gather cattle um, on her own. Set her up for jobs that she can be successful at and then back her up when you see that she's having some trouble or going to be unsuccessful if she will let you. So some dogs, they recognize the situation, they completely back out and they will let you do it for them. Um, and in that case, backing her up or trying to help her isn't going to change um, her behavior in that situation. Um, so just more and more, uh -uh. still going to be hard on her about the obedience and the listening because that doesn't matter if there are cattle in the picture or not. She needs to have a good recall. She needs to have a solid down and a sit. Um, and so she needs to listen. It doesn't matter if there are cattle or no cattle, but in the presence of work, for probably the next few works, I will loosen the reins quite a bit and just try to get her in there and kind of almost making a mess. So this is uh, what a lot of people see to start out with is adrenaline. The dog is really like, looks hot to trot. They look, um, they're pulling on the line, they're pulling on the tether, they're barking, they're carrying on. They really want to get at the cattle. And then when they get at the cattle, um, a lot of times you'll see the dog take a couple of bites and then come back to the handler. And that's kind of showing you that they saw the cattle more as a threat than something to work. So if that if you're seeing that at home or you have seen that at home where she takes a few bites because they got close to the fence line, she chases them off, then she comes back and she's like, oh, satisfied, they're out of my way now. And it's more of a release of pressure for her than it is a desire to really get control of the cattle. Um, and so, here's you guys. So saying that she's more of a heel dog means that her bite and her focus tends to be more on the back side of the cattle. So she's not trying to get them stopped. She's trying to create movement and she's trying to kind of just manage the movement as it's happening, which is fine. There's still uses for dogs like that for sure. Um, you just have to be um, smart to the way you're going to use your dog. And what a lot of people do is just put that control on them, put a solid down, a solid stop and a solid recall on them. They let the dogs kind of just push the cattle and then they call them back uh, when they've got the cattle going in the direction they want them to go. Um, my goal with her would be to, um, to get a good bite on command uh, to where she'll push the cattle for you if you need her to do that. Hey. And then um, to get her downing and then walking up on the cattle to keep them moving. 
and then some hopefully some inside flanks to where you can send her come by their walk or away their walk um, to kind of direct your cattle uh, where you're trying to get them to go. change their path because she was not going to do that because their heads were going that direction and so that's uh, that's where she needed to go and I used a line to take her with me um, but I used my body to step in front of the cattle and get them moving the right direction and um, downside to broke cattle is they start to read these signs in a dog and they start to understand that the dog isn't going to make them move if they face her so notice where their heads are pointed right now. They're looking at her. Um, they know where she is and they know um, that if they look at her, she's gonna avoid that pressure. Um, and again, being a head dog or a heel dog is something that's bred into them. Um, they either have it in them to be strong on the head or strong on the heel or they don't. It's not something that you can force the dog into. Uh, you can put the dog in any. You can put the dog in situations um, to strengthen those uh, head or heel tendencies. And um, you can like do what I was doing, which is try to put her where she needs to be, make the cattle do what they should do, and let her feel like she did that on her own, and hope that she comes around and she gets a little bit more confident. However, um, I always say when push comes to shove, the dog is going to do what comes most naturally for them, which is what was bred into her, um, which is always, for, for this dog okay, and for Rip, um, it was, it's always going to be go to the heel end um, over go to the head end. Yeah. And like I said, that's not to say um, that you can't do a lot with her or with a dog that's a heel dog, um, but you do have to be cognizant of their strengths and the weaknesses so that you can put them in positions where they will be successful and so that if there's a situation where you know that she's going to struggle you can step in and help her and she will learn to trust you um, that her owner is not going to put her in a situation that she can't handle um, and that may be because you're right there but she'll learn that over time Annie. 